the Human Security Officer, Part 12. The trio and the broken bot made their way through the station's main open area. Multiple levels of circular plazas wrapped around a main central cylindrical pillar that made up the station's center. Each level going up and down from the main was slightly smaller than the previous. What would be the bottom, oriented towards its host planet, petered out in maintenance levels. The top ended in a domed command center oriented out towards the stars. Most business happened on the main levels and Deeg led the group around to a section dedicated to various technological trades. Eyes of every variation followed the group as they went. Signs lit the entire area with offers of deals and shop names. Ship systems, ship repair, and various other common needs for space travel. Deeg seemed to know where he was going as he didn't stop to look at signs or consult a directory. Each turn was well memorized and soon enough they came upon a small shop with a small sign that read, Gids Frame Repair. Underneath this sign was an addition that read, If you don't like it, don't come back. With a chuckle Deeg walked up and wrapped his paw on the door. There was no answer. Deeg knocked again. What, a strained voice called from inside. It's Deeg, he yelled through the door. A sigh could be heard followed by shuffling and quiet steps to the door. The door opened and standing in it was another corval like Deeg. That's about where the similarities ended, however, as this man was clearly older than the captain. His facial structure was vastly different as well as his paws which were covered in mechanical tools that shifted and moved periodically. He wore a habsuit that was utterly covered in various parts and pockets. Most notable was a mechanical arm that sprouted from the back of the suit and constantly adjusted and reoriented itself with the man's movements. Well? What do you want? Gid's voice was dusty. He spoke as if constantly tense or wound tight by some invisible hand, desperately trying to use as little oxygen as possible to speak. Even Penelope noticed and she glanced at Gareth with concern. The only response she got was a covert hand held up and an expression that said not to ask. Stupid loading bot managed to damage an arm a couple of cycles ago. Oh, that's fascinating now, did it all by itself, did it? Gid looked at the frame. Well, Deeg started. Incredible really, in all my years I've never known a frame to just break itself. You know, seeing as how they don't do a thing without orders. And I curled at Deeg. Okay, okay. We were loading up some energy cells and... Ah. And there it is. We found the user error. You know the data pad that came with the damn thing has a nifty little warning about what weights the frame can handle, right? And how to properly handle different things. You're supposed to read it, yeah? And then take that into account? Idiots, always making improper use of machines, no matter what I say, never listen, he started to grumble to himself. Hey, you should be thankful to the idiots. They keep your old bones in business, don't they? Gid's response was a gruff harumph and a wave of his paw. The mechanical arm swayed in a mocking manner. Look, can you fix it? I would have a few major cycles ago, but these days I've stopped doing the bigger frames. Just too much for me now. That said, you're an old friend so I'll send you to someone who I'm sure will do you a good turn. I appreciate it, Ged. Yeah, yeah. Head down the way and take a left at the next major intersection. Keep going till you see Lear's repair. Tell her I sent you. She and that apprentice can fix this thing up. Will do. Take care of yourself, all right? Deed put a paw on Ged's chest and Ged returned the gesture. I'll be fine when idiots like you stop fucking up their machines and then come whining to me. Read the damn manual next time, will ya? Of course, I swear I will. Deed started down the way. You said that the last time. Ged yelled before turning back into his shop grumbling under his breath. What a fascinating individual Gareth remarked as they walked on, frame in tow. Delightful, isn't he? 
wound up tighter than an overclocked FTL drive, but damn if he could take one sniff of a machine and tell you exactly what was wrong with it. Of course, then he'd fix it while giving you a lecture. Deed laughed. In only a couple of minutes the group was in front of a larger shop than Ged's. The sign on its front read Lear's repair just as Ged had described. The door was open, so Deed peeked his head through as he knocked on the door frame. Be right with you, a voice yelled from back behind a number of repair bays. Hey, Laz, could, yeah, thanks. I'll be, yeah she seemed to be speaking to another before appearing from behind the bays and making her way to the front. If it wasn't for the voice, Penelope would have sworn the creature in front of them was their ship's mechanic, Thwill. They looked utterly identical save for voice and of course demeanor. Where Thwill still seemed to avoid Penelope, this creature seemed to barely note Penn's presence. She certainly didn't seem to be afraid of her. I'd ask what I could do for you but given the frame you've got behind you I'm guessing you're here for a repair? You got it. Gid said you were the one to go to. Ah. The old bone sent you. Well, I don't quite have his nose yet but I'm sure I can help. Let's see what's wrong with her and figure out the details. Bring her this way. She motioned to an empty bay. Sounds good. Deed followed. She quickly moved the frame into the bay and began examining it. Oh boy, I bet you got a lecture from the old bone didn't you? Oh yeah. Ground up socket, yeah. I'll have to take the arm out and replace a few things but it's a simple fix really. A whistling sound came from the back of the bay. A large figure stood from back where Lear had been when the trio arrived. Two arms and legs, hands with five fingers, the unmistakable form of another human made its way up to them. This one had curly red hair, pale skin, and light blue eyes. While large, massive even, in comparison to non-humans in the room, he stood quite a bit shorter than Penelope and lacked a considerable amount of muscle compared to her as well. His thin fingers moved in flashes before stopping when he noticed Penelope. He looked back to Lear and his hands continued to move. I know! Surprising to see another human, huh? They're here to get this one fixed up, she said her own little paws moving somewhat. Again, his hands began to move. This is Lass. He says it's nice to meet you, miss. Penelope didn't respond to Lear. Instead, she turned to the redhead and began her own hand movements. I'm Penelope. You're mute or? His eyes lit up and he responded quickly. Yes. You can sign. Where'd you learn? Learned when I was growing up on Aster. It's nice to meet you too, though. How'd you make it out here? She asked. Wanted to see the galaxy after I turned 18. Started just taking transport ships around and, last looked to Lear. Ship had an accident entering the system and the survivors were ferried here. He needed a place to stay so I took him in and turned out he was pretty good with machines. Over time I've learned how he talks and I do my best with, well Lear said, chuckling as she held up her paws. I'm guessing we missed something? Dee gasped. Oh. Sorry dear. I'm so used to. Lass speaks with his hands. Sign language. Penelope said as she made the sign with her hands. Lass smiled and nodded. Anyway, Lear, the serving frame in the back is good to go. Tested and ran perfectly. Lass's hands moved quickly. Excellent, I'll let them know it's ready for pickup. Lass gave a thumbs up and then looked at Penelope. I'd love to talk, first I've seen of another human in a few years. Sure. She responded. Taking my break? He turned to Lear. Of course, dear. With that he looked to Penelope, motioned his head to the back of the shop, and began walking. I'll be back. Penelope said to Deeg and Gareth as she followed Lass. Oh, of course Gareth said. His eyes followed the human and he realized how quiet she'd been today. In the meantime, we can hammer out a deal and see how long this fix'll take. 
Weir said. Last turned to Penelope as he walked, and his hands began moving again. You're big. You're small. He smiled. Haven't felt small for a while, Corval are considered big here. I haven't spent much time outside Terran space until recently, it's interesting. People, she stalled not sure exactly what she meant to say. They're quieter. Yeah. I've liked it. The quiet. I'd like somewhere quiet too. We're headed to a colony. Nice quiet spot to settle down. I'll enjoy it. He looked at her and his head cocked to the side. I don't believe you. Oh? Nope. You look like you're looking for the opposite of quiet, but if you say so then never mind. Never mind what? Was going to tell you about some, less haughty types that run a frame fighting ring in the lower levels. Closest they'll get to violence, but they keep it hush hush because no one wants to admit they find it entertaining. I fix up some of the bots from time to time. I thought you might want to check it out but if you're looking for quiet then you wouldn't want to see. Penelope looked him over. Why are you telling me this? He looked her in the eye and then glanced around at the various broken frames. He shrugged. Her dream had been echoing in her mind all day. Maybe a little diversion would shut it up. Where? 